Greetings, greetings, family. We are live, coming to you live and direct uh, via YouTube. Sister Shanice in the house, uh, looking forward to having a really interesting conversation today uh, with our His Excellency Winston McKenzie, and also uh, we're expecting uh, His Excellency all the way from Nigeria as well. So family, family, certainly hope that uh, you are going to be joining us today. Let me go over to my channel and just make sure that, um, you know, we are indeed actually live. Yes, I can see the live button. Uh, just click the live button and you will be able to join us today for another uh, Sister Shanice show. So before we go um, jumping into our program today, family, I've got so much uh, coming up. What I want to do is to just share my screen and uh, fill you in on what we've got coming your way. Up and coming guests on the Sister Shanice show. Okay, so uh, hopefully you're looking at my screen now and uh, you can see our up and coming guests. Uh, to this coming Wednesday, the 20th of April, we've got Lida Bandaka, who is the Al Kabalan revivalist movement spiritualist leader. And he's going to be joining us uh, on Wednesday, the 20th, for another really interesting discussion. He's been doing a series uh, of talks. And uh, it's going to be another great show. And then next Wednesday on the 27th, we've got Dr. Rev Shop Matthews, founding minister of First Frequency. Wow, wow, wow. That is just going to be absolutely awesome. Absolutely phenomenal. So um, certainly uh, hope that you're going to be looking forward to joining us for those events. And as if those events are not enough, uh, as if those events are not enough, family, family, we've got more events coming up your way as well. Uh, hopefully uh, the broadcast is coming over okay. I can see a slight delay uh, my end, but certainly hope that it's not interfering uh, with your uh, viewing. And I hope that you can hear me okay. Let me know in the chat. Let me uh, go back over to um, our uh, YouTube channel and see if I can see you in the uh, chat and uh, make sure that we are coming over okay. Uh, yeah, give me a greetings in the chat, please, family, as you enter the room. You know how we do it here uh, on the Sister Shanice Show. Uh, let me know that you are indeed in the house. Okay, let's see what uh, I'm actually seeing on the screen. And the good news is, is that I've got His Excellency uh, in the waiting room. We're going to be bringing him in very, very uh, shortly uh, indeed. I'm just uh, looking on the screen here just to see uh, that everything, just to make sure that everything is okay. Uh, but I've got uh, a few windows open. And uh, yeah, let me know in the chat. Uh, are you there? Are you hearing me okay? Who do we have in the house uh, so far? Come on in, family. Let me know uh, that you can see us uh, here on the Sister Shani Show. Right. Uh, there's more coming up, family. There is more coming your way. Let me um, find the other flyer uh, that is going to give you information about uh, another great event that we have got coming your way on the Sister Shanice Show. And I need you to put the word out, uh, family, about this. Here we go. As you know, uh, this coming, well, next Wednesday, actually, is going to be 50 years uh, since the uh, departure of the late, great Kwame Nkrumah. And we have a series of events that's going to be coming up starting on Saturday, the 23rd of April. We've got some great speakers lined up. Then on Sunday, the 24th, Monday, the 25th. Oh, my days. It's actually going to be a, a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal series of events. Uh, get yourself on my mailing list and you can get a copy of the flyer so that you know what's happening and when it's happening. It's also going to culminate in a, a great panel discussion as well. 
Okay, so let me stop that share there and uh, go over to my guests in the waiting room uh, who I'm going to be uh, bringing on right now. Family, family, it is indeed an honor to have His Excellency uh, Dr. Winston Mackenzie and also His Excellency uh, Professor Barsi as well, who are going to be joining us live. Okay, Dr. Winston, pull, please put your camera on so that uh, we will be able to see you uh, both. There yeah. we have uh, Dr. Winston, and we can see his friend in the background there as well. Okay, we've got Dr. Winston back with us. So we're just waiting for His Excellency, uh, Professor Barsi. Uh, to join us as well. We've, we can see uh, he's there, but we're just waiting for him to put his video on and we will be able to see him as well. But uh, right now, as you can see, we have our, our very own, His Excellency, uh, Winston McKenzie. Winston, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Um, very excited. I'm looking forward to the the election, the forthcoming election, and I hope all my people get on board and support the cause. It's not about Dr. Winston, it's about the cause. This Absolutely. is our time. Absolutely. It's about the cause indeed, and what changes you will be able to make if you were successfully elected as the mayor of Croydon. But before we go into that, um, uh, Dr. Winston. Uh, we're still waiting for His Excellency uh, to be able to see his image, but we are delighted and we are honoured, you know, and I'm honoured to have the privilege of His Excellency joining us today for this interview. He is supporting your campaign and we certainly hope that we'll be able to see him very shortly indeed. We know that there was a bit of a time okay. difference and uh, so it caught His Excellency out uh, slightly, but uh, let's uh, hope that we will be able to bring him in very shortly uh, to show his support. So, Dr. Winston, um, not everybody may know who you are, and you've had, you know, quite a, a background in politics. I wonder if you, uh, and quite a background in boxing and in business, please yeah. just tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, so well, I... I, I, I hail from a... Does she want to join you front screen? I can see her putting her head on. Join the... Are you joining join front screen? Uh, no, she's just, setting, your, just, just setting, setting everything up. You're <laughs> fine. Just um, go ahead, please. A second, though. No, Dr. well, um, it's, it's been a long journey, and um, the likes of yourself hasn't, hasn't just arrived today. Um, I've been very... Um, I've noted the work you you yourself personally have done over the, the, the ensuing years, and um, you're a credit to the black community. Um, my career started as a 12 year old when I took up boxing with my brothers, you know. Um, I suffered multiple injuries as a professional boxer and had to retire early, but my amateur career was amazing. I loved it. I won you know national schools titles I won a senior a senior title and from there I moved on to become a professional boxer um in my first seven fights I suffered a detached retina um it was quite unexpected uh seven years out the ring after seven or eight years out the ring I returned again had a few fights and then had to retire because the same injury old injury occurred again so I was on the sidelines for many years watching my brothers, Clinton and Duke, um, do really well in boxing. Uh, Duke became three times champion of the world at three different weights. And he was the youngest. So he seemed to capitalize on all our mistakes and become a real champion, you know. Um, and that's great for Duke. Uh, Clinton he himself was an, a prolific champion. He fought Sugar Ray, Ray Leonard in the Montreal Olympic Games. And would you believe it? When Clinton fought Sugar Ray Leonard, I was on my hospital back, you know, um, oh, just yeah. had, uh, couldn't see a thing, two, two detached retinas, my eyes, you know, punched out, but I'll do it all again. Boxing has made me, it's made a man of me, mm -hmm. and I'm proud. Mm -hmm. um, 
when I finished boxing, they told me I could never fight again after the serious injury at uh, Liverpool Stadium. I, I, I asked God, what shall I do? What are you going to do with me? What, what's the purpose of my life? Boxing was everything, you know. And um, it led me into lecturing in schools. It led me into community work. And then I met the most amazing um, um, politician or ex-politician in Marianne Bowness, who was the wife of Lord Peter Bowness. Uh, we're, we're not in a relationship, but we're amazing friends. You know, we fight and row every day of the week, but we're, she's my good friend and, and, and business um, partner. So through so thick and thin, Marianne has been around from day one and this is where we are today. We've been through all the elections. I've taken all the abuse, even from my own people. But I would dearly love to have seen some of my people from ordinary walks of life on the rostrum with me, you know, fighting the cause. Mm -hmm. um, this is something we can't run away from. We have our forefathers died and gave their lives and they sacrificed that we could be where we are today to continue the fight the fight for recognition, for the fight for realization, and the fight to understand one another and bring about peace and tranquility. Mm. Um, I'm in a situation now where there's no turning back. There's just, there's no, I'm there for the people. I'm there for the long run. Um, so now, after being appointed to the United Nations, almost a year ago, it's changed my life. I've met some of the most amazing people, including His Excellency and the King Basti. What a great man. Um, his spirit, his ambition, his enthusiasm, and, and the, the will of his people that he has behind me from his kingdom means the world to me means everything and i do sincerely hope he's able to um come through any complications he's got today and join us because i would love your audience to meet him um, we certainly hope well. to be able to yeah meet him as well oh my gosh let me uh, just put myself uh back on screen here so uh thank you so much for introducing yourself to us uh, dr winston you were born a fighter wow 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 absolutely boxing uh, in business and now uh, as a mayoral candidate for the London, uh, for the borough of Croydon mm -hmm. in the UK. And, uh, you know, you shared with us the, the role uh, of your friend Marion, who's with you there, uh, the role That's that right. she has had in supporting you all the way. And uh, so you're, the way, hoping, yeah. you're hoping to get the support of the wider community now so that you can be elected mayor of Croydon. I mean, if you were elected mayor of Croydon, the first thing people would want to know is, well, you know, what are you going to be bringing to the table? Why should people be electing you as mayor? What are the problems and the challenges as you see it? And how do you think, you know, what makes you think that you can address some of the challenges and the problems that exist in the borough of Croydon? And for those outside of Croydon who don't know what the challenges are, Give us a little bit of a flavour of, you know, what are some of the challenges in Croydon that you feel that you will need to be tackling and how you're going to be tackling it? That was the question, sir. Well, the most important aspect of my campaign, you know, I'm not interested in the technicalities, you know. You're, we've already had untold candidates come on. There are eight of us all together talking about we need, we need, we need. Government hasn't done this and government has done that, hasn't done that. People have to fend for themselves. We need new money. I have the support of amazing, rich entrepreneurs behind me who want to see me and others that follow me succeed. And the idea will be to, to reinvigorate trade between Great Britain and the Commonwealth, the forgotten Commonwealth, right? And it's the forgotten Commonwealth that we have to take into consideration here. Now, I supply holistic fertilizer between the 
um, the Caribbean and the continent of Africa. And if we all participate in growing our own food and exporting instead of importing, we are rich in soil, rich in wealth, mind, and authority. We are rich in all those things. We need to unite as a people now, put it together, grow our own foods, export our own foods, and take control of our future without malice and find our redemption. I have a note here um, asking you, Sister Shanice, um, he can hear you, he can hear us speaking, but he needs to be unmuted or something. Yeah, um, he's got his device on mute and his excellency also has his camera off. So uh, he needs to look in the bottom left-hand corner of his screen, uh, take his uh, phone off mute uh, or his laptop off mute, off mute and also uh, to switch his camera on and then we'll be able to see him. So, uh, yes, okay. So, okay. uh, as you're hearing there, His Excellency is in the background. His Excellency is in support of Dr. Winston uh, McKenzie's campaign. And, uh, you know, he's just uh, uh, going to hopefully find his uh, video button so that he can click the stop video and so he can start uh, coming through and also take himself off mute so we can hear uh, from His Excellency. So, um, Dr. McKenzie, you mentioned that you have the support of businesses in your campaign. Can you give us an idea of uh, what those businesses are going to be bringing to the table? If you were successfully elected as mayor, you know, the businesses that you've been con contacting with, who are they and, you know, what are they going to be bringing to the table? Well, um, over a, a fortnight ago, roughly a fortnight ago, um, we had, I invited a delegation of Commonwealth entrepreneurs and various high commissioners and people in government over to East Croydon and from the United States, um, um, Jamaica um, and other countries to name but a few, um, even Botswana and, and the Nigerians came over, you know, um, it was all documented. There we are, all sitting around the table in East Croydon, East Croydon, having our very, very important meeting concerning finances and the logistics of how we'll put this agricultural humanitarian agenda on the table. And it is from the trade and industry that I will receive from these countries that will boost our finances and give me the funding I need to help regenerate um, my borough, Croydon. So it's so important, I think, that we can um, communicate with one another and the agricultural aspect is a big deal. It's very important. I don't have to go into the particulars about agriculture because we must feed ourselves. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, have these businessmen actually given an indication as to how much they might want to uh, contribute towards? Right. Uh, well, I'm, I'm more appealing to the farmers. It's the farmers I'm appealing to. And um, I know that, you know, um, countries like Jamaica, especially, they're already on board. You know, they're already shipping in our fertilizer, our, our holistic fertilizer. And it's the yield, the potency of the, of the it's, it's like a fertilizer enhancer. You spray it on the leaves and it goes down to the roots and the roots grow and not the down. It doesn't, the plant doesn't take, you know, you don't put down fertilizer and then it grows up. This stuff is so fine. It's infinite. It, you spray it onto the leaves, mix it with water, you spray it onto the leaves by jet and within 10 days, you begin to see this holistic um, product begin to really grow and you see the, your yields increase. So what we're, we're trying to achieve now is the attention 
of the continent of Africa and other aspects, other um, islands in the Caribbean. That is why we've asked um, His Excellency King Barsi to come on today and talk about his connection with me and what he's going to do for his kingdom and how he's going to get them involved. Okay, and this within, uh, within... fertilizer, this uh, fertilizer sounds very high tech, uh, far from the sort of traditional organic type of fertilizer as we're uh, kind of used to. Um, and we do know that- Mixed with are... all sorts of chemicals. Yeah, there yeah. are a lot of chemical fertilizers on the market uh, that claim to you know, produce vast yields in a very quick uh, period of time. They tend to be the GMO ones that cause long-term harm and damage to the soil uh, right. on, on the continent and in Africa. I mean, how uh, sure are you uh, that this fertilizer that's meant to be organic is in fact organic and not some chemically modernized um, organism yes. going to destroy African soil and Caribbean soil, hence making them more reliant in the long term on food from the West and other parts of the world. Uh, and then food becomes a weapon of war for our children and grandchildren. We have to be so careful in this area. I mean, are you working with scientists who are independently checking, you know, the ingredients and the substances? in these fertilizers, how are you able to, you know, be so sure? Yes. What your well, is organic? First up, uh, um, if we go to the basics of everything, the product is called calcite. Calcite um, hails from the bottom of the ocean. It hails from um, fish bones and all the natural stuff from the bottom of the ocean. Calcite is, is smashed and drilled and brought to the surface and completely drilled down into powder. So it's not, there is nothing added to the calcite. It's pure and natural fish bones that have gathered over the years and turned into rock, solid rock. Um, so, there, I mean, someone said to me the, the other day, oh, what is it, chicken manure or a horse manure or whatever? No, this is <laughs> proper um holistic it's a proper holistic um product mm -hmm. so i believe that <laughs> this is just fantastic it's almost unique in its concept and the sooner we all stop bickering with one another and sample sample the product the better it will be for our african nations and and, and caribbean islands uh, okay. The yield mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is the is the great um, is a great plus here. Okay, and this product is made where? It comes from the bottom of the of the oh, ocean. No. Which country is, is actually making the product? Is it made in it, Africa? Made in the Caribbean? No, it's made here. It's made here in Great Britain. Okay. It's a company called Enviralizer, of which they've appointed me as their Commonwealth spokesman their Commonwealth salesperson. You know, I am the ambassador for um, Enviralizer. I am the Commonwealth ambassador. And I'm really proud of that because it gives me the opportunity to enlighten the people of the African continent that they can do better for themselves. They can show the world they have what it takes. We now have something to offer. We can feed ourselves. Thank you very much. Okay, you know. thank you uh, for that, Dr. Vinci. That is a show in itself and an interesting discussion for another time. His Excellency is desperately uh, trying to connect with us backstage. He's there. Uh, His Excellency can probably hear us, but he needs to put his camera on and take himself off mute. So, um, you know, we're just waiting for uh, him to be able uh, to do that. So, um, my brother Winston, I wonder if you could tell us uh, what is, uh, what has the response been like so far as you've been going around your constituency in Croydon? What has the response been like from local people? Very good question, Sister Shanice. Absolutely very good question. Um, I was dubious uh, because of my political past 
and the various political parties I'd been involved in. But mm-hmm. people really do need to ask themselves, um, you know, are, you know, what are what are they looking for? And um, I, I don't believe it's about policy anymore. I believe it's pure and simple. The fight is for look for the candidate who has the funds to change lives, to turn things around. And I'm I'm running independent for a great reason. I'm running independent because I don't want to be controlled by the system. I want to be controlled by the people to carry the people's voice. Now, I've been on the doorsteps and much to my surprise, normally you'd hear either people are voting Tory or they're voting uh, uh, um, Labour. But people feel so angry and disturbed by the way they've been treated by successive political political parties. And I really believe now is the time, now is the time to make that change, to go for the independent um, candidates or look to someone who you can actually identify with, not just in terms of color, but people who have specific proof of what they're saying. Everything I'm saying has already been tried, tested. It's ingrained in the system. I have proof of funds. I have proof of the people who are actually following me. And that's what counts. I will make through my sponsors, I will make through my sponsors and the product that I sell to these countries, they will be no less than 50 million pounds immediately available to the community Mm -hmm. and that will help transform lives it will help transform lives and we're talking about everybody here i don't have to broadcast the fact that i'm a black man coming from nothing coming from nowhere ex-boxer ex-whatever trying to make a difference in my community i'm sick to death of you how there has been stabbings and this, that, and the other. Okay, we're so going to change my it. apologies there. For a brief moment, we were able to hear His Excellency. His Excellency, we can hear you now. You've unchecked mute. We can hear and now we can see you. Oh, you've been backstage for some time. Uh, he's finally found the right knobs to click. Uh, we are indeed honoured, uh, Your Excellency, uh, Professor Abasi or Georgi uh, Abebeni. We are delighted to have your company. Thank you so, so much for your persistence in trying to come on. And uh, you are, you know, supporting Dr. Winston McKenzie's campaign, absolutely phenomenal. But first of all, I wonder if you could kindly just introduce yourself, uh, Your Majesty, to uh, the viewers, to the audience. Go ahead, please, Your Majesty. Absolutely. The real, the real greetings and the blessings of our fathers, you know, to the land, you know, of uh, hope, you know, and the great future. Um, it delights my spirit to be associated with this uh, program today, particularly because we are the African Commonwealth. And um, as fate could have it, I come from the community and the country uh, that is the, 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 the mega country, the giant of Africa. And uh, my mother, my mother is uh, my mother is a Ghanaian. Again, the gateway to Africa. You can take that away from us. And we are the two sister countries, two sister nations that have been colonized, you know, by the British. And then we have, you know, we are members of the Commonwealth. And then by birth, I come from the royal dynasty, you know, the community and, um, you know, a kingdom that in the whole, you know, Nigeria, the Queen of England, you know, in their exploration, you know, to 
settled in Africa and coming to Nigeria, they discover my, my community. They discover the kingdom. The most viable, the most sociable, the most accommodating, the most learned, and the most civilized community to settle. And that was what informed you know, them to send Lord Lugard you know, to Nigeria. And he stayed in Calabar, the Ethic Kingdom, where the Queen of England graciously, you know, Queen Elizabeth I, graciously in 1960, giving the independence to Nigeria, came to Calabar and handed over the power you know, of independence, you know, to Nigeria. So I am proudly from there, from that big kingdom. And um, from my other extended kingdom, I am the fourth generational king of 52 um, mega, you know, communities under my kingdom. And then um, I was born the, into the royalty by spiritual identification. I wear the crown that my own father didn't wear, even though he was, you know, the head of the community. Because the crown must be, you know, by birth and by revelation. And so if you if you have your camera and you look at my mark here, I came with the the, the mark, the natural mark, the birth mark that you know uh, identifies me as a reincarnated, you know, king you know, of the community. And so I am not just um, uh, sitting on the throne, um, you know, by, as a celebrant, I'm also a kingmaker. And so my name is His Excellency, uh, His Royal Majesty, King Professor Batsi Ojoy Enebiene Obazi Aniyum Anna. Obazi, Anna. And when you count the names, it will give you up to seven and eight generational you know, um, ancestors. And my community is called Ikot Anna, which is also from the name of my ancestors. And my family name is Aniyom Anna, which again is from that same stock. And so, I am privileged, you know, to be born and, you know, schooled. I, I became a professor, the first professor of the family. I am, you know, speaking as a judge, a presiding judge, you know, of um, a court of uh, competence in Nigeria. And I am the president of um, all the customary and the district courts. I am also... Um, the Archbishop of the Wesley Synod in Canterbury, Kent, England, African Foundation, you know, incorporated in Ghana and in Nigeria. I also sit, you know, as um, the head of the university, the St. Thomas Abbott University, you know, which is um, an establishment, you know, um, an extension of. Um, the St. Thomas Institute in Africa. Uh, I sit as the presiding president of the university, and I'm also a member of the uh, executive, the international executive team of the United Nations, um, you know, global uh, university for global peace, you know, USA, and the American University for Global Peace and Sustainable Development, USA. I am the deputy governor, you know, of this organization. And also the Academy, you know, for um, Academy for Universal Global Peace. Um, I work under, you know, the Chairman, His Eminence, um, Patrick, you know, Professor Doctor um, uh, Chris Christian, Madhu Christian, and Indian American scientist, uh, alongside with. Um, his Eminence, His Excellency, His Royal Highness, uh, Professor Dr. Kiwi Kalo, you know, the Deputy Governor. His Excellency, uh, His Royal Majesty, His Royal Highness, Bishop, you know, Professor Dr. Joseph Lamarck, and 
you know, uh, Her Royal Majesty, the Queen of Can you know, the Canadian Queen of Music, an Ambassador of Peace, you know, Queen Oba, Doctor Pro Professor Doctor Queen Oba, you know, you know her. Um, I have come a long way in life as a brief uh, introduction. I was. We seem to have lost our, our trained in oh. petroleum technology. In fact, by the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I have worked in. Oh dear, your excellence so, uh, at the management level and. That... Hello. Yeah, Hello? We're having some, yeah, we're having some difficulty with Hello? your line. Uh, your line is chipping in and out. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, okay. yeah we're having yes, some please. problems. So we, so we like are. I was saying, I've been, I've been, you know, vested with a lot of family. Family, you know, as you can see, yeah, uh, His Excellency. Uh, has just been uh, presenting us with uh, a very, uh, very... Elaborate. Sorry? <laughs> to, you know, very, yeah, it's elaborate, quite elaborate, isn't it? <laughs> very, very well connected, holds a whole range of titles, sits on a substantial number of important committees, and uh, right. obviously is someone that has a lot of influence, potentially a lot of power and a lot of sway. And so, you know, this is certainly someone who we need to be developing a long-term relationship with because, you know, um, I'm sure he wants to hear from us what our views and opinions are. And, uh, you know, we would want him channeling our views and opinions into some of these very high profile um, bodies that he is part of. Hey, they may not want to hear from us, but hey, we would have a lot to say, uh, most definitely, because, you know, as our brothers uh, said, you know, um, being part of the Commonwealth, uh, for some, uh, the only thing that's common uh, in the Commonwealth is that the West commonly have all of the wealth and Africa commonly has all of the poverty. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done there. And we're happy to help in any way we can uh, to balance and level out uh, the economic playing field. Uh, Dr. Winston, let me go back to you now uh, for some personal remarks. We are already 40 minutes into the interview. Time goes so quickly. Yes, that's uh, right. I say, right. honor, honor to have His Excellency here uh, supporting yes. uh, this platform and your campaign. Pain. But let me allow you, you know, a couple of minutes to round up. Well, um, I think the most important things that people have to realise is that we simply need change. And, you know, many politicians come on and they talk about change, but it's action we want. And my, my agenda will be to build a, a youth academy. Um, in the old gas works in, Co in uh, Catherine Street, just on the corner of Catherine Street there, the old gas works can, you know, refurbish the place and have it turn it into a youth academy, which will present us with um, music, um, film, and dance as a studio. Um, we have to find aspects in society to get the youth off the street, to get them concentrated, to get them focused, you know? Um, my Commonwealth Central building in the heart of Croydon will harbor Commonwealth goods from the continent of Africa and the Caribbean, goods and produce in particular, agricultural produce that will be viably cheaper than what's going on now. We came out of the European Union a while back and the statements are that if black people vote to come out of Europe, our food would be, our yams, our bananas and everything, uh, uh, and the Car Car um, Caribbean produce would be so much cheaper. But still we're in, we're still paying five pounds for a piece of sweet potato and 10 pounds for a piece of yam. You know, all this can change if we want it to, you know? Um, and we're looking at a, a three, 100 
million humanitarian project financed by my United Nations counterparts, who I'm very involved with at the moment, and the agricultural project backed by His Excellency King Dr. Barsi and his kingdom. Mm -hmm. And the finances will be coming through the agricultural projects, projects that projects that will be on the table, moving, and with immediate effect, my UN counterparts will fund the 50 million that I need as a com for community projects, viable community projects, viable community businesses, people who are not getting a look in, people who need to come forth and state, stake their claim and open their businesses, viable businesses, and make something of themselves. I can't offer more than that. Wonderful. We thank you so, so much, Dr. Winston. You know, um, and, I, and you also said to me uh, previously that one of the first things that you would be doing if you was uh, elected mayor is that you would be having a meeting with the community and the business sector to sit down around the table and to get views and opinions as to what your policy uh, direction ought to be. Because, you know, uh, you, you're obviously, you started talking about your, what your some aspects of your economic plan, but you know, clearly there, there are some who may not be interested in music and media, for example, or agriculture, but very interested in you know other business sectors. And so it's about just, what just, please, may I just say, may I just say there are so many people, including my own youngest son today, suffering the effects of autism and the um, inoculation program that they have on at the present moment. And this aspect of autism must be addressed. It's in our food, it's in our drink, it's in our everyday lives. So mm -hmm. I have a program that will help eliminate this situation. People need to begin to eat healthily and be mindful of what they eat and what they drink. And we can only achieve ultimate peace of mind, strength and unity we come together. Absolutely. Thank you so, so much. To everyone who's watching uh, at home, thank you so much. To all of you that's in the chat, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to be coming back on family at the top of the hour. I'm going to be talking about um, the uh, British government's policy on um, sending uh, so-called immigrants to Rwanda for processing and uh, on the other hand opening the doors to the Ukrainians uh, to come in in uh, their tens of thousands. We're going to be having a little bit of a discussion at this of, about this at the top of the hour. So look out for the live link at the top of the hour. In 15 minutes time, family, I will be coming back uh, right at you. But for now, I want to thank our brother, Dr. Winston McKenzie, may you be an inspiration to other young people who are watching you today and are thinking, if you can run for mayor today, I can run for mayor tomorrow and yes. I can even run uh, for prime minister. So whether you win or not, you are indeed a winner. And so, you know, may uh, all of your works and your efforts uh, begin to bear a lot of fruits in our community and the wider community. And I wish you every success uh, with your independent uh, candidacy position and your bid for Mayor of Croydon. And thank you so much for introducing us to His Excellency as well. Uh, it was a pleasure to hear from him. It's a shame about the technical difficulties, but we got to meet him, we got to hear from him. And it's awesome that he's backing your campaign. And we also rise up your friend, Mariam, as well, uh, who is there supporting and fighting your corner with you. Take care, uh, Winston. Okay. okay. God bless you. And thank you so much for giving yeah. me the opportunity to come on. You'll meet Professor Barsky in person very soon. Oh, that would be awesome. Okay. Thank you, okay, Winston. To everyone in the chat. Thank you so, so much. Join me at the top of the hour where I'm going to let you know my views and opinions on these um, policies that are being introduced in the UK that we need to have a lot to